Anyone with even a casual interest in the history of synthesizers has heard of the titanic struggle that took place in the mid-1970s when all of the companies were infringing on Bob Moog's filter patent. You've undoubtedly heard about how Moog went after ARP because ARP had been using the filter in the ARP 2600 and other places, and how there's a lawsuit between these two big companies to keep them from using the filter. But did you ever hear about how Moog Music was infringing on ARP's patents at exactly that same time? The real story of what happened with patents and synthesizers in the 1970s is a bit more nuanced than you've heard. Here's what really happened. Alan R. Perlman was inspired at the beginning of his entrance to the new world of synthesizers in 1968 by the work of Bob Moog and Don Buchla. But his initial inspiration was less about duplicating what had been done, and more about using his own skills and experience to create new synthesizer designs that improved upon the concept of synthesizer design. Perlman had just sold his op and production company Nexus and wanted to apply his electronic technology know-how and component design to synthesizers. He analyzed the designs of Buchla and Moog and realized that there were many elements of his work that could be applied to synthesizer technology to improve its function and sound. One of the ways he employed his skill in circuit design was to address the substantial challenges associated with creating oscillators that were stable and stayed in tune. Despite their ingenious designs, the oscillators used by both Moog and Buchla had serious tuning challenges. Using aspects of his previous work, Perlman employed a technique where he paired various components so that they could share the same operating temperatures, resulting in much more stable oscillators. This gave his company a substantial edge in the emerging synthesizer industry. In 1969, in the development of his unique 2500 modular system, Perlman hit upon a certain implementation of keyboard technology that allowed the system to sense the highest and lowest voltages present on a keyboard being played. Since two voltages could be sensed, two notes could be played. This was the birth of duophonic keyboards. One of the models of ARP 2500 keyboard could play two notes at a time. At a time where traditional musicians were getting into synthesizers and wanted to be able to play more than one note at a time, this was an important development. This ability showed up in the ARP Odyssey and eventually the ARP 2600. ARP patented this design in 1972. In 1964, Bob Moog started off with a bandpass filter, but at the prompting of Gus Chamaga at the University of Toronto, Bob decided to create a low-pass filter to be used in his modular designs. He implemented a typical filter design that resembled a ladder in the way that the transistors and components were arranged, and his design was novel and resulted in a truly gorgeous character of sound. In 1969, the Moog ladder filter was patented. Not long after the release of the ARP 2600, Moog Music, the company Bob Moog worked for, was curious about the great sounding filter found in the ARP 2600. Of the relatively few synthesizers present in the fledgling market, the Moog filter had a very distinctive sound that seemed to be shared by the filter in ARP's 2600. Unfortunately for Moog Music, ARP employed the 1960 design protection trick where whole circuit boards were encased in epoxy. While this was a great design idea for keeping operating temperatures stable, it also had the added benefit of protecting designs, or possibly concealing them. Moog would have to chip into the epoxy chunk that seemed to be the filter to discover if there was any infringement. Moog Music had the new summer intern Richie Walborn go to work on the potted components of the 2600 with an ice pick, hoping to get down to the actual circuit. And what did he discover? He discovered that the ladder filter of the ARP 2600 was suspiciously similar to Bob Moog's patented ladder filter design. The story goes that Bob Moog made a visit to Alan R. Perlman and pointed out that ARP was using his filter. Alan R. Perlman characterized it as having been a little bit intense. But Alan maintained that while it was similar, it wasn't stolen. He had started out with a diode-based filter and merely tried substituting transistors. The sound, as we know, was pretty great. And Alan pointed out a couple things in regard to Moog. Bob Moog, responding to complaints about the instability of the 901 oscillator, had set about building a more stable version of it, the 921, in about 1971, the year that ARP synthesizers became available. 
The 921 actually implements a similar trick which Perlman used to make ARP oscillators more stable than Moog or Buchla. And in 1972, Moog Music released the Sonic 6, which we talk about in another story. The Moog Sonic 6 implemented the same high note, low note, priority duophonic structure that ARP had patented for the keyboard controller for the ARP 2500. So Moog Music was using a bit of patented ARP technology in their designs as well. After discussing these things, Moog and Perlman sort of cooled down, and the threats subsided. ARP changed their filter design, and Moog designed other products. No lawsuit ever happened, and both companies agreed that they have borrowed from each other. Conflict makes a great story, and conflict between icons makes a legend. But the truth of the matter is, in the development of synthesizers, different companies and different inventors borrowed freely from each other in their own designs. It was just part of the business at that time. Both Moog and ARP went on and to change their designs away from the patents and follow their own pursuits, and ultimately fold, unfortunately. But the fact is, there was never any lawsuit. The history of synthesizers is as astonishing as it is strange.